In this video, we'll cover aspects of vocal delivery. Vocal delivery, as you'll see with nonverbal delivery, is all about using your voice to try to enhance your message rather than detract from it. In the following video, we'll look at some of the different ways in which you can use your voice and different techniques in which you can use your voice to enhance the delivery, enhance your message in your speech. The first aspect of vocal delivery we'll talk about is volume. Volume is defined as the loudness or softness of the voice. How loud should you speak? Well, of course, this all depends on the situation. You could be in a large auditorium with microphone amplification and thus could speak more quietly than you do in a classroom speech. You want to speak loud enough so the person sitting in the back row can hear comfortably. You shouldn't sound like you're yelling. and You should be able to get either louder or quieter should you want to add some sort of effect and still be understood. So how do you use volume strategically? You can vary the volume at key points in the speech. Getting both louder and quieter will emphasize an important part in your speech. The final note about volume is to pay attention to the audience. They'll give you feedback concerning if you are too loud or too quiet. The second aspect of vocal delivery to pay attention to is pitch. Pitch can be defined as your voice on the musical scale. Both overly high and overly low pitches can be difficult to understand and are often considered displeasing. So consider the fact you might need to get either higher or lower for effect when you're picking a range of pitches for your speech. Monotone is another pitch that is distracting. That is when all your tones are within a similar range for the entire speech. This is read as boring and distracting. Use pitch strategically. Higher pitch is used to convey excitement and lower pitch is used to convey seriousness. Finally, know your pitch rises when you're nervous. Your pitch might be higher than you practice when you start to deliver your speech. In terms of vocal delivery, you also want to pay attention to rate. That's the speed at which you speak. Just like your pitch will get higher when you're nervous, your rate might increase as well. Beware of that and make sure you practice enough that you are very confident in your delivery. Again, beware of speaking too slow and sounding monotonous as well as speaking too fast and having your words be uninterpretable. You can use rate strategically by speeding up or slowing down to emphasize a point, speaking faster when ideas are less important, and slowing down for really important ideas like your thesis statement and main point statements. Slower rates often convey seriousness, and again, faster rates convey feelings of suspense and excitement. The next aspect of voice we'll cover is pause. Great speakers use pause to enhance their messages. A well-timed pause emphasizes the point that, they, uh, that was just made by giving the audience time to consider the statement and, hopefully, commit it to memory. When speakers don't utilize enough pauses, their ideas run together and the audience isn't able to easily pull out the big ideas because they are always receiving new information to process. So, a well-timed pause communicates that the information that came before it was important. A well-timed pause also communicates a transition in the speech. A small pause can let the audience know that the speaker has moved on to a new topic. As you work to use volume, pitch, rate, and pause, as well as other aspects of vocal delivery we'll cover next, together you'll see how you can strategically vary all these dimensions of voice to present a dynamic and interesting presentation that is engaging and easy for the audience to understand. While using pause well can add to a speech, using pause poorly can detract from the effectiveness of your speech. Some common problems you'll want to avoid include pausing too often. If you pause too often, your speech will lack a pleasant flow. Your audience will likely find this distracting. Pausing at the wrong places. You want to be careful pausing in the middle of sentences as this can make your speech sound awkward. Pauses that are too short. We don't like silence when we're presenting, so sometimes you might try rushing through pauses. Recording yourself practicing can bring your attention to pauses that are too short and vocalize in unfilled pauses. Vocalized pauses are the ums, ahs, and likes that sometimes make their way into our speeches. Having some vocalized pauses isn't bad. It's a natural speech pattern. 
Having too many pauses, however, can be distracting. Another important aspect of voice is articulation. Articulation is the way you say specific sounds. This is similar to enunciation, which is the way you say specific words. When you properly articulate and enunciate a word, you are using the proper pronunciation for the word. There will be times that, you, that the way you articulate a word is different from one of your peers because of where you grew up. Regional differences can account for differences in articulation. You also want to be careful with the precision of your enunciation. While you likely don't want to slur all your words together, like what you're doing instead of what you are doing, you also don't want to be too precise in your enunciation so you come across as con condescending. This can make the audience view you negatively. Finally you, finally, you want to make sure you are pronouncing, pronouncing words correctly. When you mispronounce words, it can confuse your audience. It can also distract your audience, as they might pay more attention to your mistake than your message. Finally, it can make you seem less credible. If you're giving a speech on Mardi Gras, but you say Mardi Gras, your audience won't believe you know what you're talking about, and will likely tune the rest of your speech out. If you're concerned about pronunciation, look up the word on Merriam-Webster Dictionary. There is a little button on the site that will pronounce the word for you. Also, try writing out the word how it sounds on your speaking notes, so you remember how to say it during delivery. Lastly, you want to pay attention to your inflections. Inflections are the ways you vary your voice within your sentences. Typically, when you adopt an inflection pattern where your pitch rises at the end of a statement, we assume that statement is a question. Statements, generally speaking, have an inflection pattern where your pitch lowers at the end of the statement. Students typically need to watch out for rising inflections during their speeches. When students are unsure of their messages, they sometimes look to their audiences for feedback that they are doing okay. This leads to speakers adopting a rising inflection on every sentence, which makes every sentence sound like a question. Also, you want to be precise when varying inflections can drastically change the message. Nothing is better than a Diet Coke communicates a very different message than nothing is better than a Diet Coke. As with everything, think about the audience or think about how the audience will receive your message as you work to enhance your vocal delivery. How will the audience perceive the variations in volume, pitch, rate, pause, articulation, and inflection? Which vocal dimensions could you vary to enhance audience understanding? Are there any things you are doing that will hinder audience understanding? Paying attention to your audience's needs will help you use variations in vocal delivery to develop a message that sounds natural and is easy to understand.